Hi, this is Luca 5 Ultimate. How can I help you? In yellow? Yeah, we have that in stock. Um, it is one size fits all, but they do run a little big. Yeah, I'll pick that for you right now and it should be there in three to five days. So today we're going to be talking about maximizing your acceleration and this is really important in Ultimate because we need to be both quick and fast in order to get to the disc first. Rory's going to be helping us out today showing some common moves on the foam roller that will loosen up your hips and your quads and get you ready to accelerate. So she's going to just basically move back and forth right on top of her hip joint here and just loosen up any kind of adhesions that are restricting that hip. Once she gets that nice and loose, she's gonna move down a little bit more towards her knee. And she's gonna get the IT band here. The IT band is an area that can get super duper tight and really restrict our knee's ability to bend and move. That's gonna be a problem for our acceleration. So she's gonna get down here really long and just get this whole IT band, this whole muscle belly here. So once your hip is nice and loose, you're going to roll over onto your quad and we're going to try and get some of those knots that are restricting you and keeping you from reaching your maximum speed just smoothed out as much as we can. So Rory's going to start up top close to her hip, but then she's going to try and find one or two spaces here that are kind of just little pressure points. And once she finds one of those places, she's going to hang out on it and she's going to bend and straighten her leg. So this is basically encouraging the muscle to work through a full range of motion while we're on that pressure point is going to allow it to dissipate and release. So an important note about foam rolling, you never want to go beyond a four or a five on a 10 point scale in terms of pain. You want to stay in that range where you can talk and breathe easily, otherwise you're just creating more muscular tension. So she's going to hang out here until that starts to feel a little bit better and then she's going to move on. So now that we've removed some of those soft tissue restrictions, we're going to move into some mobility work because it's really important that everything is as open as possible before we try and put force into the ground. So Rory is in this nice position here. I'm going to have her ground her heel down and I'm going to have her take her knee past her toe. So she's just going to move in and out of this position. So she's not getting there and hanging out. She's really going back and forth. And this is really allowing the ankle to develop this dynamic range of motion as opposed to sitting out and camping out into a stretch. So that's one of the differences between mobility and flexibility is that we're looking at the joints here. We're looking at the ankle joint. She's keeping her hips nice and square. She's keeping her posture nice and tall. And once she feels that that one is nice and buttery, she's just going to move on to the other one. Now that our movements are very flossed, we're going to turn on all the right musculature and get everything firing in the places that we want it to fire so that we have that maximum drive. So Rory's going to demonstrate this hip flexor trio. So basically the first position is she's going to be down in this stance, she's going to have her heel up so the lot of weight isn't going into her knee. And she's just going to come forward and back and really get into that hip flexor, that rear hip flexor. So again, this is a mobility exercise. This isn't a stretch. So we're not going to camp out in the front. We're going to really move in and we're going to move out. And notice how she's keeping her pelvis nice and stable. She's not, you know, sticking her butt out at the back part there. So she's going to do this a few times, maybe four or five times, and then she's going to bring that front foot in. Now from this point, we're focusing on trying to stand tall and be strong through that rear leg glute. So she's going to bring her hands up behind her head. She's just going to pick that front foot off the ground and put it back down. This is called tapping the brakes. So what this does is it teaches her front hip flexor to fire really strongly while her rear leg glute is stabilizing. Then from this place, she's going to ground that front foot and she's just going to do a twist to either side. This helps her hips learn how to stabilize when one leg is in front.
Now we want to get her ready to actually use her arms in a sprint. So we're going to do a very simple arm action drill where she's basically going to do sprinting arms, but from this kneeling position, which is going to give her a lot more stability through her lower body. She doesn't have to worry about what her lower body is doing at this moment. So she's going to stand up nice and tall on her knees and she's going to be just start moving her arms kind of slowly and then she's going to speed it up and speed it up and speed it up until it's more and more like game speed. So she's going to think about a couple things while she's doing this. So go ahead and speed it up Rory more like you're running. So she's going to pretend like she's throwing sand behind her each time. Where we generate power with our arms is right here by our hips. So she's not focusing too much up here. She's really down here and behind her with her arms. And she's just thinking about breathing and opening up her collarbones and being as long through her arms and moving her shoulder blades as freely as possible. So we've done our soft tissue work, we have mobilized, we have activated the right musculature, and now we're ready to jump in with our team and do some drills with our team that are gonna help our accelerative power. So the first one of these drills is backward lunges. So on these backward lunges, what Rory's gonna be thinking about as she alternates from leg to leg is keeping a nice long posture. She's gonna be at this nice long angle here and not collapsing in her chest. She's also using her good arm action and she's turning her sternum, she's turning the middle of her chest towards that standing leg. That's gonna allow her to get maximum drive off of that front foot. So again, we're getting ready to explode off of that front leg. So this is one of the line-to-line -line drills that you might do in practice. We're really specifically focusing on thigh separation here and getting minimal ground contact because the quicker you can turn your feet over on the ground, the faster you are when you accelerate. So Rory's just going to do some skips for us here. So these first skips are going to be a little bit lower. She's really focusing on using her arms. She's focusing on driving her knees up as high as possible. And then on the way back, I'm going to have her think about getting a little more elevation, a little more pop off the ground. So this is getting ready to really explode off of that front leg when you accelerate. So now we're ready to actually start running. So in order to help her learn how to get her feet underneath her when she's accelerating and not lean out in front, we're going to do some falling starts. So she's going to start nice and tall, she's going to fall forward, and then she's going to take a few three to five hard steps in order to recover, and that's going to be her acceleration. Then she's just going to coast out to the line. So for these falling starts, she's going to come up off her heels just a little bit, and she's just going to keep her body nice and tall. She's going to lean forward, and then she's going to take one, two, three, four, five, and coast it out. So a lot of people wonder, how do you rep acceleration without running really fast over and over again? The answer is that you apply resistance. So in this case, we're gonna be using tubing to do that. So we're gonna do a couple different drills. What Rory and Neely have here is this nice, fancy, fairly expensive green enormous rubber band. Um, what I have here is a totally free bicycle inner tube. Both of these things are great tools to use for this resistance application. So it depends on your budget, it depends on how long you wanna be using these tools for. So the first exercise we're gonna work on is the high knee march. So the nice thing about having this resistance here that Neely's providing is that Rory can really lean her hips into this band and really stay open in the front of her hips here while she's thinking about driving her knees. She actually has something to push into. So they're gonna do this slow march. Neely's gonna keep pace with her and she's gonna focus on pushing through her hips, using her arms, driving her knees, but she's really able to stay at this long body angle, which is great for working on acceleration. Neely's just kind of crab walking behind her. That's perfect. When you're driving those knees, you want to make sure that you're consistently pushing against that band. One thing that happens a lot of times is as soon as resistance goes on, that person starts caving at the hips. You really want to remind them to stay open and stay pushing through with that rear leg glute. So when we do this drill, just remember that we're running. We're not doing any of this other fancy stuff to get us ready to run, we're really running. So if at any point it doesn't feel as though you're running, check back in with yourself and just try and work through the resistance. Don't worry about it too much. So Rory's gonna start from a two-point stance here. She's gonna take three to five hard steps and then coast out. Neely's gonna give her good resistance in the beginning and then he's gonna run with her. Okay, go ahead. So one, two, three, four, five, they both stand up, they both coast out. 
What Neely wants to do here as someone assisting her is he wants to give her that resistance, not too much, because he wants her to still be able to run. And then he's gonna let her go and just basically coast along behind her. One, two, three, four, five, and then stand it up. Same thing from that two-point stance, three hard steps. One, two, three, and then we're standing up and we're coasting out. Nice job, guys. So we've been talking about acceleration today. This is important because in Ultimate, we need to not just be fast, we also need to be quick. We need to get that quick separation away from our person to get to the disc first. So things to remember, don't lose your posture, don't fall over, stay nice and long. You wanna get good drive into the ground from a really good shin angle, just hit that midfoot on the way back.